Hello everybody, welcome back to the Dally Society. I'm Kristen and today we're going to talk about the things that I made in December. Welcome to 2020. Happy New Year to everyone that's just tuned in. I um, hope you all had a lovely uh, holiday season, Christmas time. I hope you all got to have a little bit of downtime um, and you got to enjoy what you love doing the most and that you got to be with the people that you love the most. You all got some lovely little prezzies and that everyone appreciated the things that you had for them. Uh, I know I certainly did. I got some beautiful little sewing gifts. Um, did you guys get anything sewing related for Christmas? And if so, pop them in the comments. I'd love to hear about what you what you all may have received for Christmas. I'll uh, show you a couple of little goodies that I received for Christmas. I was actually um, quite happy with my Secret Santa. We all we all did a uh, little $50 budget Secret Santa. It really allows you to personalize the gift knowing that you're just buying for the one person and to really delve into what makes that person tick. And the person that got me really got spot on with what I wanted. I think my <laughs> oldest daughter, Phoebe, actually uh, we ended up spilling the beans and a lot of people found out who had them, which was quite funny because I think everyone was so uh, ecstatic with what they received. But I actually got some beautiful little things from um, from Phoebe from a little sewing-related gift store in the city called Lucello's. And Lucello's have an online store as well. Really exquisite threads and fat quarters if you're into like quilting. They're actually at a beautiful little store upstairs in Swanston Street in the city in Melbourne. And I actually uh, got to visit there a few months ago just on a shopping trip and I just thought it was just like this little world that you can just delve into and um, find uh, really unique little gifts for anyone that's into some sewing related hobbies. So I'll show you what I got. I absolutely loved this tote bag she found for me because of course the dahlias are featuring on the front here. It's a little vintage tote bag which I'm gonna use this especially for when I go out shopping. Um, I just love that uh, botanic, the vintage botanics on the front. It's uh, really pretty. She also got me some beautiful little gold merchant and mill snips, which are great for when you um, just snipping off all those loose ends of threads. They're actually beautiful and light, they're quite sturdy to use. So I'm loving those. And also in my little package is another little merchant mills uh, needle threader, which is coming in handy for me because at the moment my uh, Janome needle threader is uh, playing up. I can't seem to quite line it up how it was. I think it um, when I replaced the needle one day, I might have thrown it out of alignment. So. Some beautiful little pins as well. Just the little vintage French brand Seju pins. They're really, really cute. A lot um, of the brands in the cellos you'll find that you can't actually find anywhere else. They're really, um, really quite pretty. Um, and the visuals, the packaging on them is beautiful as well. So I also received a uh, spotlight gift card from my mum, which was fantastic. <laughs> my hubby gave me some little earrings and a nice bottle of uh, orange uh, Salerno liqueur, which is beautiful. And I've got a little cat bars as well. So yeah, just a really lovely little personalized gift. So with the uh, spotlight gift card, I have already been in and I purchased used up all of that voucher so in my next episode i will have a little bit more of a fabric haul that i want to go through with you guys and show you all the goodies i found there as you all know i've had a really busy month um launching the twice as nice series we had a lot of uh dresses for christmas a lot of special occasion wear that i actually had sewn up so i was flat out doing that um so many dresses for the month of december if you want to look back and see all my special occasion wear that i've um, sewn up and done episodes on previously i will link those episodes episodes below so we had a lot of stretch velvet a lot of jersey dress patterns that I had some fantastic comments about and it was great to see a lot of people actually tagging me on Instagram and saying that they'd seen a certain pattern on my vlog and then decided to sew it up for Christmas so that was that was a fantastic compliment um, to know that you guys that, that the patterns have worked for you as well so thank you so much for that but yeah, I'm into sewing uh, a lot of um, the SSL sort so of a lot of special occasion wear. So I'm really looking forward to getting down and practical with you guys at the moment. I want to say a big thank you to all my new subscribers that have jumped on board as well. Um, at the moment, we're standing at 1.5 thousand subscribers, which is amazing. Um, and I've got to thank uh, Tamlin and Keely, Tamlin from Sun of the Time and Keely from Voice of the Creative. And also Elisa Shea from uh, Thoughtful Creativity. They've all had me on board and done a collab with me in the last month or so and have helped me boost my viewers. So if you've come to the channel through those guys, 
thank you for coming welcome and yeah please share my channel around because the more subscribers that we get going the more episodes i can bring out for you guys to enjoy so hopefully we can come back to the two episodes a week i know over christmas and new year i haven't had one out with a little break in this week but i promise you the two a week will be uh, happening more regularly so thank you for subscribing. I also want to say a big thank you to the comments I receive and a lot of um, people will question things that, that, I, that I've put in, a, in, a, in an episode and wanted to know more details. I'm very happy to answer questions and comments and suggestions as well. I've so also decided to do a little poll in the next couple of days that you can look on the YouTube community page. If you're a subscriber you'll see the community page and I'll have a little poll coming out for that. We're going to do a sew along and I want you guys to let me know what you would prefer. So whatever gets the most votes will will be happening so we're going to either go for a sew house seven free range slack a donovan skirt by helen's closet or an ashton top from helen's closet so they're the three options if there's something there that you're really wanting to learn how to make and you'd like to watch a step-by-step -step tutorial please vote for that because i've um, got fabric ready for all three of those things and it's just basically wanting to know what you guys are wanting to see it's um it's really important to me to be putting out episodes that you'll get the most value out of so don't forget to vote on that we're talking about the me maids for as i said for december i'll um as i said i've linked the dress uh episodes below but we're getting on to more practical wear at the moment I've made quite a few things for December so I'll just go through those with you um, the first one I've got on today is a uh, chalk and notch pattern which I made in a spotlight linen they still have this available it's um, like a Hawaiian vintage print linen and I'll just stand up so you can see as well okay and it is just a like a very um, like a swing tank top pattern and it is fully lined as well so the good thing about this is that um, you can use quite a few different fabrics. You can use a bit more of a drapey fabric, like a rayon or a soft crepe, or you can go for more of a structured, like a linen or a cotton. So uh, it's, I loved the actual fit of this. I really like the inner faced um, tops that you don't always need to do a binding on. Um, they get that beautiful clean finish around the neck and around the sleeves. So you can see that there's the lining on these. And they use their burrito method. I think I've talked about that before. The burrito method is when you are putting a lining on a, you know, like a camisole or a top, and it's the way you turn it inside out that you can get those nice clean finishes. So really happy with that. So this is the Victory Tank from Chalk and Notch Patterns. I'm always really happy with Chalk and Notch Patterns because I find them to be drafted beautifully. The fit, I think I've got a, did a size 14 in this one, and it didn't need any adjustments at all the length was perfect it's a great um, length for over pants and even skirts because it's not too long so you're not looking at a tunic you're more or less looking at a tank but a swing tank so it gives you that beautiful shape and i've also got on today the so house seven free range slacks now i heard a lot about these pants i'd heard a lot on instagram people have raved about them for a long time and you guys over in the northern hemisphere of course being back in the july august period a lot of people were making these for, for your summer and i've had them in mind to make for quite a while and i'm really glad i did the thing i like about the pants is they've got a beautiful high waist with the thick elastic with the gathering around the top they have a lovely pocket that's not the side um, seam pocket because the side seams are actually a separate piece like a long piece on each side stitched flat and then the pockets, I don't know if you can see this very well, but the pockets are really nice uh, flat front pockets. So they're not adding too much bulk around the side of the pants, which is great if you don't want to have that bulky hip kind of look. Um, I think you'd be really happy with the uh, lovely flattering, especially the fall of the pants. They, they're really full and draped lovely. If you on haven't them. heard of So House 7 patterns before, they have the Burnside bibs and also the toaster sweaters, which I've done for winter last year that turned out really well as well so give them a try have a look on their website now i made these pants in a linen lyocell blend lyocell is just another name for a tensile so the tensile is a trademark of the lyocell um, fabric itself and it's just like a kind of a rayon that they actually mix in with the linen to get that nice drapey effect now, i love wearing linen i don't always love how it creases i know we should bring a linen dress and it creases a bit that's that's fine you can kind of get away with that but when you're wearing pants and you're sitting a lot in them and you get those lines at the front they don't look 
great um, and it's nice with a bit of always go for a bit of a blend with your linen so a linen cotton or a linen lysol will always um, wear a lot softer and a lot drapier than a pure linen which can be a bit stiff and a bit cardboardy so the the, bit, the more money you pay for a linen of course the better quality you're going to get but yeah i love the lysol blended linen so i've got the khaki on in this and the so has seven um free range slacks they come in either a wide leg or a tapered leg fit I decided to do the tapered leg that rolls up at the bottom because I've got quite a few wide leg pants at the moment so I wanted to see how they fitted and I also love the fact with a tapered leg pant and you've got like a more of a floaty top it kind of complements each other so if you have too much wide leg and too much wide fitting tops it doesn't give you that shape that, that I'm after so um, you've kind of got to mix and match a little bit there so really happy they are the most comfortable pants ever so i'll be definitely making more of these and actually thinking about doing them in shorts as well so um yeah love them so go ahead and look up the so house seven free range slacks now the lysol linen i've got on as well are from spotlight so um yeah look up they've got quite a few colors in those as well like they've got a nice brick color which i'm going to do next in that too and oh. i also made my by hand london hannah dress in the linen lysol blend and I wore that Christmas day after making all the velvet dresses in the world that I had. It was a really hot day and decided that linen would be it because I was doing a lot of cooking in the kitchen and I wanted to be cool and comfortable. So um, yeah, I went with the um, went with the Hannah dress for Christmas day. I was very happy with wearing that. And yeah, with the gathering at the waist, I had a lot of room for all the, all the food that I ended up eating. So. so yeah, it's nice with all the stress of Christmas to actually be thinking about getting back into sewing because I like to have a bit of routine in my life. I like to have that. The sewing for me is gives me that steady routine and it's also a bit of a create, knitting that creative outlet to keep my mind busy and focused as well. So as soon as you're out of your, your routine, sometimes you can feel a bit strange and we all feel a bit weird that week between Christmas and New Year's where we quite don't quite know what day it is or what time it is or what we're doing and we feel a little bit, you know, after a day or two it's quite nice but after a week you tend to you can feel a little bit um, down in the dumps or a bit out of sorts with yourself so it's really nice to have something to come back to and for me the sewing is what brings me back and grounds me so I don't know how you guys feel about that but that's personally what sewing does for me it's a, it's a really good all-rounder with um with your mood especially another great little outfit I made too which I absolutely loved wearing I'm, I wore it Christmas Eve uh, was the Donovan and Ashton ensemble which was Helen's closet now Helen brought these out in uh, in the summertime for you guys which is around July um, and I loved wearing this skirt now um, it's almost like the paper bag waist style with a thick elastic um, and the pockets at the front and I made it in a, another linen print I got from Spotlight I loved the pockets in, I don't have any skirts with pockets so it was really um almost like a casual really casual skirt because normally skirts are something you wear to to be a bit more dressed up but i like the fact that this is a dress down kind of casualized skirt absolutely love wearing this and I want to make a few more of these as well and I think my um, my daughter Phoebe's picked out some fabric she wants to make she wants to start getting into sewing as well and um, she's yeah picked out some fabric for this style and I told her this would be a perfect style because it's a straight skirt but it's not completely straight it's got the gathering around the waist so it's an easy fit skirt um, really practical and something you can wear with t-shirts um, you could even make that for winter as well. I don't see why not. You could do it in a, a little bit of a heavier fabric. You wouldn't want too heavy because it is meant to be a drapey, lightweight kind of skirt, but um, almost like a, you could do a brush cotton. That kind of thing would work really well in this as well. And I paired it with the Ashton top. Now, there's two options for this in length. One's cropped, one's the normal length, and I went for the longer length. And you can also do either a binding, the self binding vice binding or a facing now i went for the facing with this one because i love that look that stabilized neckline and hem gives you with a facing it's a little bit more work but i think it's well worth it um and it finishes off really lovely on the inside as well so with the facing if you have enough fabric if you don't have enough um for the facing definitely go with a binding um if you have some spare bias binding but if you want to if you want to make it the same bias binding sometimes you can use more fabric by having to cut on the angle so facings might not use as much as what you think 
So really have a look at your, um, she does give the um, fabric estimations of what you'll need with a bias binding in comparison to a facing. So really look at that. Um, then I went for a contrasting top stitching for the denim. I just loved having a denim or like almost like a chambray denim top because it's really neutral and you can, you can put it with just about any colored pant or skirt. So if you're ever wondering about a neutral color, don't, um, don't forget about denims and chambrays because they are a very neutral type of fabric. And yeah, it doesn't matter if you spill a bit of food on the wash off quite easily. Sometimes when you go for a light fabric, you gotta be really careful. And if you, if you like cooking like me, um, you, you'll always manage to, to dirty it. So denim is very hard wearing. So really happy with that little outfit. Most of you, if you're following my channel, you will see my little um, collab I did with Elisa Shea from Thoughtful Creativity. We did a Cal Miss Calypso top, which is a free pattern. Um, that was in the Lady McElroy fabric the focus on fashion and seamstress fabrics, which is where I source this from in Australia. They're down to their last bolt of this. So if you're interested in this fabric and you're having trouble finding it, she has a, a little bit left there. But as I say, it's the last fabric she'll, she'll get at this range. So be really quick. I'll link her shop below so you can actually have a look online for that. And I lined that in, in a cotton voil because it's quite, as you can see, without the, um, without the lining, it's quite see-through. Um, beautiful and light to wear and I actually in the episode you'll see I actually discussed how I altered these two to fit the shape I wanted so that has a little bow at the back as well but that was a really nice a nice garment to wear really cool and washed up beautiful as well now another chalk and notch pattern which I had made at the start of the month I hadn't put this on a vlog as yet so I thought I'd better show you guys what I did with this this is the Farrah top now the Farrah top can be made in a dress or a top there's two versions one has the lovely frilled sleeve and it goes all the way down the side and then it goes down to a side split as well with a longer at the back than the front now I'll pop some pictures up of me in this one as well I loved this I actually thought I didn't think it would be quite as fiddly. It was quite a fiddly make because of all the gathering. Um, it looked a lot easier than it was, but I think he, I underestimated the amount of time that would uh, take me to do the frills and the amount of, um, you know, the quartering of the, the edges, the side splits and that type of thing. But it's well worth it when you see it on. It's a really beautiful top to wear. I made it in a rayon from Spotlight as well. Um, it can be made in any type of drapey, floaty fabric. And you can see there's pictures of the pattern I'll pop up here as well. The lady has it on with a dress. I think it's Gabriella from Chalk and Not. She has it on with a, in a dress style. I just love that little fluttery sleeve because it's a very delicate and very feminine. Um, but it's also quite a casual top that you can get away with, with with shorts or with jeans or that sort of thing as well. And that lovely tunic length, which is um, a really nice style to wear, um, especially if you're wearing it over like a skinny leg jean or a, a, like a denim skirt um, or a tapered leg pants. So yeah, a really lovely style. And it's got that nice placket on the front. So not too much gathering on the bus. It's more of a floaty straight style, but all the detail is in the sleeves. So it's really different, really unusual. The other variation on this top too, you'll see it's a sleeveless version with a frill on the front. So I'm actually considering making that in a nice cream um, crepe round that I've got I think it would look really nice in that with um, with a little cami underneath. So yeah, I'm really loving the chalk and notch. The um, every time I make a chalk and notch pattern, I'm wrapped with how it's turned out. Um, I just find that I don't have to make any alterations to the fit. It fits me perfectly. So um, yeah, really happy with that as well. The last thing I'm going to talk about is my lander pants that I had made um, back in October. I had made a couple of lander pants in a heavier weight denim, and then I decided to do a lander pant in a tensile. Now, although it wasn't recommended because you need more of a bottom heavier weight fabric, I thought I'd go ahead and make the tensile. Always know when the designer suggests certain fabric, there's a reason why. Be very careful with picking fabrics and always try and stick to what um, the designer recommends because otherwise you tend to have a few little issues. Now with these lander pants, um, I made them out of a really lightweight tensile. Um, and what happened with the button front fly, I, every time I wore them, because the fabric would ease and give as you wore it, the button front would bag out and you'd see the inner seam 
and they'd pucker. I put them on standby for a while. I thought, well, I'll put a zip in the back. No, that's too much hard work to try and get the fit right because the back would never fit me perfectly anyway. It was always too big, so I had to have darts in there. They didn't look very professional. So I put these jeans away and I thought, you know, they're, they're a collot style. I thought I'd wait till I'd really just decide what to do with them. Then I was watching Karina on Lifting Pins and Needles and she came up with her beautiful version of the flat front hand and how to adjust it and put an elastic waist in the back and I thought you know I've done that before and it's worked really well there's no reason why I can't do it with my lander pants so I unpicked the back um, the back facings and I did what she suggested and I put the thick elastic in the very back which brought it all in really nicely that was the issue with the back that I had that was too big and then I actually just sewed up the front placket where the buttons were so it wasn't like a fly front opening anymore but with the elastic back, I had the room to pull them up and down and it's fixed it perfectly. So I am really thrilled with these now because it's solved two issues at once for me. So I really have to thank Karina for that. Um, if you're new to her channel, go, I'll pop a link to her channel so you can go over and have a little look at her. She's got um, a, a wealth of knowledge. Any beginner sewist that wants to learn how to get back to basics and how to do things from scratch. She has so many tutorials and she'll get up close and so personal, I think it's called, where she'll go through a garment. And she actually does a lot of hacks that she will change a pattern to suit herself and her lifestyle. And that is the beauty of sewing that you, um, she calls it limitless sewing. So you can actually get on there and you can adapt something to suit your own lifestyle, which is which is brilliant. So thank you, Karina, for that. You've saved my lander pants <laughs> and they're ready to wear for summer now. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed my little December makes issue. Um, next, we'll be discussing some things that I have revitalized out of my wardrobe and a fabric haul coming up very shortly as well to show you what I actually purchased with that gift card. So thank you again for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.